Welcome to Bibliophiles Anonymous, episode 12. I'm Denise. And I'm Jess. So it's been a busy week for me. How's your week been? Um, not that busy, but I have finally, after like two and a half years of having the pieces, managed to get my bookshelf reassembled. Woohoo! Yeah, and started the painting process. <clears throat> I've decided I was going to paint the entire thing black because my entertainment center, the two shelves that I have my DVDs on, the shelf that I have all of my video games on, and the other bookshelf that I have are all black. Uh-huh. So I was just going to paint the whole thing black and make it match. Well, you know, seeing as how I'm kind of short on money at the moment, I scrounged through our workshop building and I found some paint and I decided I'm just going to paint it with what paint I have. And I have a pint or a quart pint, I don't know, a little can of satin black paint, which is not enough to do all of the insides of all the shelves and outside the bookcase. Right. Well, then I also had a half a gallon of this vibrant teal turquoisey color that my friend Jenny used to paint her bathroom when she was living with us. So I was like, hmm, I'll paint the insides of the shelves with that and then paint the outside of the bookcase black. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Yeah, I thought so. So I got all, we did the primer yesterday and I did, I painted all of the insides of the shelves with the turquoise today. Two coats. So tomorrow I can do the black. That'll probably take two coats. And once that dries, I can move it and my books will no longer be homeless. Yay! I'm excited. (laughs) Well, I haven't had a whole lot of time to read much this past week. My office where I work has been going through a lot of changes lately and one of them has been a big increase in mostly temporary employees but we have outgrown our building and so they've decided that my department is moving to another building which means a lot of cleaning and sorting and shuffling through boxes to see what we're bringing with us and what we're not what's really old and can be shredded and what we have to keep for, you know, whatever accounting purposes. So I spent two full days pretty much doing nothing but chucking boxes everywhere. My Mm, arms, my arms hurt, my back (laughs) hurts. I haven't done this much physical activity in a very, very long time because I have a desk job. I sit at a desk and type on a computer all day long, and then I come home and I either read or I work on my manuscript, which is also sitting and typing at a computer all night long. And, you know, I don't do a lot of heavy lifting all the time. Yeah. (laughs) And that seems like all I've done this week. (laughs) But hopefully by this weekend it'll all be done and we'll be in our new place. Of course, then we have to unpack everything and hoping that won't be as bad as the packing part has been maybe not i hope not i haven't read a lot either partially because you know i've been working on getting my bookshelf back together and partially because a while back my best friend and her wanderings through youtube you know how youtube youtube is like wikipedia you start you look for a specific thing and if you get to browsing the related videos you end up in the weird part of youtube Well, she was browsing, and she found this vlog, a video vlog, of this British girl. And this girl, she was in California visiting friends, and then, you know, went back to England. And she vlogs every day. And I have gotten sucked into her vlogs. (laughs) And I quit watching them for a while, but this week I've been watching them again. And I have made it almost through a year of her life. Wow. She started in October of 2010, and I just started watching the September 2011 ones. And she's still doing it, so I've still got quite a ways to go before I'm actually caught up in current. But that's what I've been doing this week. I have read some more on the uh, the Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning. I'm almost done with that. I'm about 60% through the last book. And wow, there's a lot of weird twists going on. Oh, really? Yeah. Because apparently, see, <clears throat> the main character, Mac, always assumed that she was human. Apparently, she's not human. And I don't really want to tell you who she thinks she is because that's kind of a big twist, kind of a big plot point that's in this last book. So, yeah, it, but it's kind of like, what? How? how that? No. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> 
that doesn't work. So that's been kind of interesting. That's what I've. It sounds like. Other it. than that, I haven't really read anything. Although I really do need to start reading things like I don't know the book we're going to discuss next week. That might be a good thing. Although, <laughs> to be honest, I haven't read it yet either. Well, it does. It's not going to take me long. If I no. actually put my mind to it, I can read it in like a day. So. Right. Well, I've I've started a couple of books this week. I haven't gotten very far. Like I said, I've been. By the time I get home, it's pretty much been, you know, wrangle the kids together, have dinner, do homework with my daughter, and then get her to bed. And then by that time, I'm pretty much ready to go to bed, too. So um, I did start the sequel, or actually it's book two in the News Flesh trilogy by Mira Grant. And you'll remember I really, really enjoyed reading Feed. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about something that had a major, major twist at the end of it. Feed did. And it was one of the types that I didn't know where it was even possible to go on from that point. So, you know, I've been reading this series so far with the website markreads.net. And thankfully, he is continuing on with the full series. So we're going to read the whole trilogy. So we started book two which is called deadline and ah. i've only read like the first couple of chapters and mm. it's 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 interesting it's not grabbing me quite as well as as feed did but there's it's a whole other character talking the whole thing is told first person and yeah. so i got so used <clears throat> to the other narrator that having this new person it's not a new person it's a character that we've you know, known since the beginning, but it's weird hearing it through his eyes and through his thoughts and everything. So that's just going to take a little bit of getting used to, but I, I like it so far. It's just, like I said, it's, it's not quite as gripping as the first one was, but I think part of that was because the first one, there was so much world building going on, trying to describe what life was like after the zombies had kind of taken over. And yeah. now you kind of know all of that, and you know what the world is like. You don't have to invest as much time trying to figure it all out, I guess. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe. But it is good so far. And it's, uh, I'm sure it's going to be as good as Feed was, because she's a very good author. Uh, let's see, what else have I started? I started reading a book that we're going to discuss, not next week, but the week after that. It's the next Tavern Book Club book, and it's Night Train to Rigel by Timothy Zahn. And it's very, very, very science fiction-y, which is not usually what I read. Yeah, me either. It's, it's interesting, though. Um, it seems like it's going to be kind of a, maybe a little bit of a political type of a thriller, maybe? I don't know. I've only read a few chapters so far. But there's well, kind of a mystery going on, and there's uh, all these different races that the humans now interact with, and one that's really interesting, but I'm not going to go into it now. Obviously, we're going to discuss it in two weeks on the show, so. Well, you're ahead of me. I haven't even started it yet, so. Well, you've got some time. And I don't, yeah. it's, not a, it's not a very long book, so it shouldn't take you too long to read. And I haven't started yet, but I'm planning on starting Dark Frost by Jennifer Estep uh, probably yeah. this weekend sometime so that I can finish Dark Frost and then read Crimson Frost, which is what we will be discussing next week. Yay! Yay! We can't tell people to read Crimson Frost along with us, though. Yes. Well, it's no. not out yet. Yeah. But we can definitely recommend it. Yes. If we like it. And if if it's as good as the other three, then I'll be happy because I've really, really enjoyed the entire series so far. Well, I've I've read, I've read the first two books and I've I really liked those, so I'm looking forward to seeing where she goes with it. And yeah. now, do we know if Crimson Frost is the last book in the series? Is I don't know. I haven't looked. Is it done at that point? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And when we find out, we'll let everybody else know too. But other than that, I haven't I haven't finished anything new. Um, every once in a while, if I'm 
not feeling like reading anything else. I'm still working on Game of Thrones. But that's such a big book, and there's yeah. so many characters. I've read it before, so it's it's something pretty easy to just pick up and read a little bit and then put it down again. But that one pretty much sits on my, my bedside table, so if I'm still awake and I need something to read to kind of relax, then that's what I pick up. That's one of those that I'm going to get around to reading eventually. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's really, really good. And, and you would you would like it. I usually do. It's fantasy stuff like that I usually do. And like I said, it's, it's something that I looked at reading even before the HBO show, which I haven't watched. So, I mean, that really has no influence over my desire to read the books. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got it for a Christmas present before the HBO show even came out. So, but I have friends of mine who are just diehard George R.R. R. Martin fans. And some of them actually have seen the HBO show and they said they did a really good job with it. And See, I'm kind of, I don't know if I want to try to watch the show before I read the books or if I want to read the books before I start watching the show. I can't decide because I have, because we talked about this whole book adaptation thing. You know how I am. I'm a stickler for the details, which it's easier to fit all of the details in when you're doing a TV series. Oh, yeah. You have a huge book, and if they tried to do it in, say, a two-and-a-half to three-hour movie, it would be terrible because you would have to just chop bits out left and right. But if you're doing an entire series, a television series, I'm not even sure how many episodes it is, but it would have to be at least eight or nine episodes, I would think. Yeah. You've got a lot more room to play if you're shooting a series than yes. a movie. And they've actually they either started or they're getting ready to start uh, the second book. Yeah. They're actually I, they're going to keep going with it, so that's exciting. I guess that means that well, George R.R. R. Martin has to keep writing <laughs> cuz yeah. cuz the series isn't done yet. I think he's got he's got at least one more book, maybe two, I don't remember. I mean, I, I, it's kind of exciting that the whole fantasy genre is getting more attention now with stuff like that. Because, you know, they did Legend of the Seeker a couple of years ago, which was based on uh, Terry Goodkind, his Wizard's First Rule. Uh-huh. That series, I can't remember the name of the series. I remember the first book is Wizard's First Rule. Um, and I watched the show. I had never read the books. I think I actually own most of them, but they're that they're part of that stuff that I haven't gotten around to reading yet. Uh-huh. Mostly, I think, because it wasn't until the past several months that I actually got the first book. I had, like, book two, three, four or something. It's hard to start a series when you don't have the first book. This is true. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> I really liked the show. I may feel differently once I get around to reading books. <laughs> but it's still exciting that they're they're doing stuff like that with the fantasy genre. And from what I hear they're doing a really good job with it. You know, yeah, they're, they're giving mean, Legend... they're giving it the treatment that it deserves. Yeah, I mean Legend of the Seeker from some from the standpoint of someone who hasn't read the books but is a big fan of fantasy in general, it was really good. Mm-hmm. The costuming and the the characterization and everything it was it, it was really really good and I think my favorite part was the costuming because one of the characters, Caitlin, she wears this dress. She's a con- she's a thing called a confessor, and she wears this dress. Well, it's more like a robe really over her dress that's white and it's got a hood and it laces up the front, and it was so pretty and I want one. <laughs> I love her dress. Well, this this should. Uh go right into our main discussion for today and uh, you had come up with this idea and I think it was kind of an interesting one. We're not talking about a specific book or a specific genre or anything like that. Uh, We were going to talk a little bit about what it is that draws you to certain books and there's lots of reasons why you might want to pick up a book and read it. It might be because you see the cover and you think that the cover looks interesting or the blurb on the back of the book sounds like something interesting or maybe you just know the author's previous work and that draws you to find other books that they've written. And since we were talking about movies and the television series, I'm going to confess 
that the only reason that I ever read any of the Harry Potter books was because I saw the first movie. Oh, you're one of those. I was I'm <laughs> one of those. See, the thing is, when I heard first heard about the books, I dismissed them as just like a kid's book. And not that there's anything wrong with kids' books. I read kids' books all the time, but I didn't think that it was that big a deal. Even And then all of a sudden the movies came out and there was all this, this hype. But I would never have picked up the book if I hadn't seen the movie first. See, I read the book. I remember my high school library got the first book when I was a senior. Uh-huh. But it took me a little while longer to actually read them. But I think the first three were already out when I started reading them. So I read the first three and I had to wait on book four. See, I I read the first four and then I had to wait on book five. In fact, I was so anxious for book five that I reread Goblet of Fire so many times I broke the spine on the book. (laughs) It is now in two halves. (laughs) Only (laughs) helping by that little cloth bit in the middle. (laughs) I had a copy of Chamber of Secrets, I think, that did that. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I, I don't remember. I know Holly read the first one when we were in high school. And I don't remember if she just pestered me until I read them or if I decided on my own that I needed to read them or what made me read them. But I do know I read them before the movies because I was so excited when the movies came out. Well, and I also, you know, read Lord of the Rings long before those movies came out, too. <laughs> right. Well, I think most people did. Because yeah. that, one, that one's been around a lot longer. Are there any other um, books that you've seen the movie first and then found out that it was a book? Yes. There's been a few. Um, the one that comes to mind, I haven't actually read the book that this came from, but it surprised me that I, when I found out it was a book. And that was The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, okay, yeah. It was, it was a, it's a, actually I think it was a short story, maybe a novella. I can't remember. It wasn't an actual full-length novel by Stephen King. Yes. And that kind of threw me for a loop. I was like, Stephen King wrote this? <laughs> this is so not what I would expect from Stephen King. <clears throat> but for the most part, I think most movies that are adaptations of books, I know that going in. Uh-huh. That I'd not, I, That's not to say that I have read all of the books that these movies are based on, because sometimes I just watch the movie. But a lot of times, most of the time, I know if it's based on a book. But as far as what normally draws me to a book, it depends on where I'm at when I'm looking at them. Like, if I'm at the library, most of the time, it's like, I'll say 75% of it is the cover. Mm -hmm. If I'm at the library, because I just look at the covers and I'm like, oh, okay, that one looks kind of cool. Let's pick that one up and see what it's about. Then I will, you know, look at the author's name, see if it's something I recognize, and I'll read the blurb. If I'm in a bookstore and I'm looking to buy, then usually I'm looking for things that I already know about. Uh Uh-huh. So it's usually knowledge of the author's previous works or, you know, something like that. I do have to say, though, Cinda Williams Chima's Seven Realm series, that one got me because of the cover. I found the Demon King in Barnes and Noble, I believe, and I bought it strictly based on the cover, which it, and these covers, if you haven't seen them, you need to look them up. They are so pretty. Yeah, I've only, I've only seen the one for the Demon King and then the Crimson Crown, but both of them are really, really pretty. They're all, you know, laid out in a similar way, but especially if you line them up together, they're really, really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. I love the covers. And then some Sometimes it is the title that catches me, and they're the, the the ones that illustrate that the best. There was a series I found at my library by Alan Bradley. It's the Flavia Deleuze series. The main character is an eleven year old girl, and she she fancies herself a chemist. She has a laboratory, and she does all this thing, and she likes poisons. And I I picked these up because the titles. The first one was the sweetness at the bottom of the pie. And the second one was the weed that strings the hangman's bag. And I was like, those sound interesting. I need to investigate this further. <laughs> those are interesting titles. And then it was uh, a red herring without mustard. I am half sick of shadows. And then 
the the fifth book comes out next year, and it's uh, speaking from among the bones. Huh. So he has some 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 catchy titles. And yeah, the, I'm like I have to know more. <laughs> So that was one case when it was the titles that got me. Well, I would say probably for me that the book cover doesn't usually draw me in very often. Mostly because a lot of books that I've read have either kind of generic covers or they don't have a lot of cover art. And, you know, there's not a whole lot to go on. There, there have been several that have been different from that, of course. One of the ones that I saw the cover, and it was probably in Barnes & Noble or Borders. You know, may it rest in peace. Um, but it was Scar Night by Alan Campbell. And it has, it has a picture kind of of an angel. But it's a very dark, almost like in a silhouette. The description on the back did not really match what the front looked like and mm. so it was kind of like I had to put the pieces together in order to figure it out mm -hmm. but then once I got on Goodreads there's whole lists of books that you can look for like your best covers or all, all these different topics I know there was one was the best cover art that involves like a girl in a pretty dress or something yeah, like that. The, the lists and yeah, stuff. They have a ton of different lists like that. And I've I've found a lot of really interesting covers that way. One is a book that's coming out uh, next year sometime and it's called My Name is Rapunzel by K. C. Hilton. And I don't know very much about it and there isn't a a lot of information even on Goodreads, but the cover is absolutely gorgeous I mean if you think about Rapunzel it's a I think it's gonna be a retelling of the the fairy tale mm -hmm. and so it's the picture of the girl and just the way that she's standing with the sunlight and the hair and it's just it's really really pretty and I like retellings of fairy tales anyway so that's one that I guess the the cover really drew me in yeah <clears throat> I know the whole, you know, your whole life you've heard the old saying, you you shouldn't judge, never judge a book by its cover. But unfortunately, a lot of us do. And I mean, there, that, that really is, if I go to the library and I'm not having to commit to spend money on these books, mm -hmm. then yeah, I'll, I'll judge a book by its cover. I'll pick up a cover that looks interesting and it's like, hmm, I think I'll give this a shot. Well, there's a reason if why they have somebody paid to make these covers look a certain way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, especially on Goodreads, they have a ton of different lists that are sp specifically about all the different book covers and what they've, you know, the, their favorites, either the best book covers or the most beautiful or dresses to die for. I think that was one of the ones that had all the girls in the pretty dresses on the cover. Um, Hottest guy on a cover. That one's interesting. Oh, I need to get that one. <laughs> but yeah, I just... But now I do, when I go to the bookstore, I have this rule when we go to McKay that I have to buy something that I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't... Because I have... I literally have a journal. And on the pages in this journal, I have a list of books that I want to own. And I, I have a deal with myself that when I go, I can't just buy things off the list. I have to find something that I have never heard of, and I have to bring it home and give it a chance. I've done that a few times. Once, it worked out really well. The last couple of times that the stuff that I got kind of backfired. <laughs> <laughs> One of them I got based on the covers. And that was and we actually read the first one as a book club book, and I, did, I suggested it, and I didn't even finish it. Which, and that which was, was that? Path of Fate by Diana Farrow Francis, I think. Yeah. I just couldn't get into it. I couldn't either. It it just, if it was just where my head was, if it was the book or what, but I just, I got about, I got about halfway through it and I didn't finish it. I was like, I just, I'm not interested. I had, I had a similar problem and it made me feel kind of bad because there were several people that were reading along with us that really liked it. Yeah, and 
that's what I'm sitting there thinking. Was it me? Maybe it must have just been me. <laughs> it might. Yeah, I'm like I suggested it, and I can't even read it. This is not good. Yeah. And the other one was, um, <clears throat> I bought all, and I had bought all three of the books in that series. So, <laughs> yeah, those are going back to McKay's next time I go. <laughs> They're in the trading box. And the, then there was the Glass Rites series by Mindy L. Klasky. These were all fairly short books. And the covers looked interesting. And then I read the blurb and it was like, <clears throat> you know, main character is a, a girl and you know i like heroines we discussed heroines last week right you know i i like a good fantasy series that has a strong female lead in it but that one wasn't that good i finished the first one i tried to read the second one and i couldn't do it i'm just like i don't really connect with her she kind of annoys me <laughs> and it wasn't just me i looked at the reviews on goodreads and a lot of people the first book got really, really low reviews. And the others got better reviews, but I just couldn't read them. I'm just like, I can't do this. Yeah, once once the first book in the series has kind of soured you, you can't really get past that sometimes. The only time that I ever did get past the first book being kind of lackluster and ended up really enjoying the rest of the series was the Green Rider series by Kristen Britton. Those are, for some unbeknownst reason, shelved with the young adult stuff at my library. I will never understand why. But anyway, <laughs> I read the first one, and it was okay. I finished it, and I was like, this was one of those that, like, the first book, the reviews weren't great, but, like, the second, third, and fourth one all had, like, four and five star reviews. I was like, okay, these must get drastically better. Right. So, I, since they had them all, I got them and read them. And they were. They were a lot better. But, I thought it was a finished series when I started reading it. I thought four books was all there was. Nope. I get to the end of the book four. And, and you'll... You, I think I've mentioned this before. And you will hear me complain about this a lot. It ends with the main character trapped in a stone box. And that's it. That That's literally where it ends. She wakes <laughs> up and she is in a stone box... And that's where the book ends. Well, that doesn't give you much to go on, does it? No. I'm like, <laughs> what? No, you can't end it there. And this woman, this, this book was published in 2011. And all of her books, there's been at least four years between each book. So you've got a while to go. I'm going to die before I find out what happens <laughs> to her. You know, the world is supposed to end in like, what, two weeks? Something like that. I'm like... The world cannot end. There are too many books coming out in the next few years that I need to read. <laughs> the world is not allowed to end in December. I'm going to be mad if it does. <laughs> but yeah, that that was one of those that I kind of picked up because of the covers. Because they, they had really pretty covers. They had a, a... I mean, these were like pictures that I would like to have posters of on my wall, you know. Uh -huh. But then again, I am the person. I have... Jigsaw puzzles of dragons and wizards that I have put together and glued and hung on my wall. So, <laughs> cool. So, but yeah, they the, the covers were really pretty. Some kind of some fantasy artist. I don't. I remember looking on the copyright page to see who the artist was, but I don't remember who it was now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those were kind of you know one of those where the covers drew me in. Well, another thing that we had we had mentioned. Uh was reading an author's book because of their reputation. Yeah. And there's one author in particular that I started reading strictly because of, well, partially because of reputation and then partially because of watching videos on YouTube, strangely enough. But that's John Green, who's a very popular young adult author. And he's won all sorts of awards for his novels, but he's almost as well or even better well known as being half of the vlog brothers youtube channel and it's him and his brother hank and they started off in 2007 i think as a way to challenge themselves and kind of to get to know each other as as brothers as adults and they were just trading youtube videos back and forth every day and they weren't allowed to communicate by any text they couldn't email they couldn't do text messages it was strictly communicating through these videos and so you watch it and you kind of got to know them 
a little bit. Well, actually, quite a bit. And several times, John would mention that he was finishing up a book, and he was trying to figure out what to name it, and he was going through the revision process, and he kept talking about it, and so I was like, well, okay, that's... I don't... I know nothing about the book. I only know this guy who's talking to me on the computer screen, but he seems like a decent fellow, so let's look for the book when it comes out. Well, it was already out because I was watching some older videos. So off I go to the bookstore, and I found it, and the first book of his that I read was the one he was talking about, and it was called Paper Towns, and it was wonderful. It was one of those books that I found myself reading at like 11 o'clock at night, and I said, oh, I'll just read one more chapter, and the next thing I know, I'm finished with the book, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'll, I know that feeling intimately. Yeah. And I can't even... It's hard to even describe what the book is about. It's not fantasy. It's it's straightforward young adult fiction about these uh, kids who are seniors in high school. And the main character is, is you know, kind of geeky and... You know, all of his friends are, and it, it kind of chronicles the main character, his name is Quentin, and the crush and fascination, I guess, he has with his next-door neighbor named Margot, and I guess there's no other way to put it. She runs away from home, and he finds kind of all of these clues to figure out where she went, hmm. and so he, he becomes borderline obsessed with it, and eventually starts trying to track down all of these clues and figure out what she was trying to tell him. Anyway, it's it's a really good book, and I'm doing a very bad job of describing it. But once I read that book and enjoyed it, I had to go and see, well, what else did this guy write? And that led me to uh, Looking for Alaska, which is an amazing book. Uh, then he also wrote a book called An Abundance of Catherines, which... I also liked that one because of the title. <laughs> that is kind of an interesting title. Well, it's about this boy who has dated or had crushes on numerous girls, all with the name Catherine. And it, it, that was another one that was really clever and fun. And I will have to say, though, that it, I think it, with the exception for that one, every single one of John Green's books have made me cry. <laughs> He's, wow. <laughs> but he's a very good writer. You know, you just, you get sucked into these characters and their lives and what they go through. The last book that he just published this past year was called The Fault in Our Stars. And it's winning all kinds of awards all over the place. And it's a beautiful book. But then after re reading, you know, John Green's work and enjoying it, I heard him talk about a whole bunch of other young adult authors like Maureen Johnson and uh, Scott Westerfeld and David Levithan and oh, just a whole bunch of other ones. And because I knew John Green's work and he knew all of these other people, it just kind of started branching off from there and I started reading their work. And it was all because of, you know, the reputation and the way that it kind of spread out. Yeah. <clears throat> there's There's a few authors that... I follow that when they write something new, I want it. Mm -hmm. And the the main one of those is Mercedes Lackey. I, now, there she has written a lot of stuff that I have not read. She does a lot of co-authoring. Uh -huh. She does series with other authors. And I haven't read a lot of that. I have read her Bardic Voices series which were really good. I have read all of the Heralds of Valdemar books because, oh, I love them. <laughs> and I have started read. I started reading the 500 Kingdoms books. I just, I love the way she writes. And she, oh, I've also read her Diana Tregard books, which a lot of people may not know this. Those went out of print for a long time because she started getting death threats from people. Oh my gosh. Because they were convinced that it wasn't fiction, that it was true. It, Diana Tregard is a witch, and she's a, this thing called a guardian. She's supposed to guard against supernatural stuff. 
And uh, people were sending her letters thinking that she must, sending Mercedes Lackey letters saying that she must be a guardian because she knows all about this. And she's like, I made it up in my head. (laughs) You know, so they took those books out of print. They stopped printing them and they were really, really hard to find for a long time. Oh my gosh. I managed to find all three of them. And then, two or three years ago, they actually, because, I think because of the surge in popularity of Supernatural stuff, uh-huh. like the show Supernatural and, and you know, all of the vampire books that were coming out and everything like that, because that, that was becoming more and more accepted, they decided to start printing the Diana Tregard books again. And now you can buy an omnibus of all three of them, which I also own. (laughs) But everything I've read by her, I've liked. So when she writes something new, especially if it's in one of the universes that I've read, I want it. Right. And that's kind of one of those where it's based on the reputation, knowing the author's previous works. I mean, especially if it's a Valdemar book, I'm going to read it. It's that simple. And I don't think there's... Well, I mean, Chloe Neal, I want all... But so far, she, well, no, she does have that other series that I haven't read yet. But I do want to read it. She's written The Chicagoland Vampires, and then she has another series called The Dark Elite. Uh-huh. And I want to read those, too. I'm going to. I promise. <laughs> but I, want, I love her Chicagoland Vampires, and I want every one that comes out. I think we're eventually going to do the first one of those as a book club book. Yes, that is listed. I'm not sure exactly when, probably in in a few months. Yeah, but the first one of that series is on the list, so we're definitely going to do that. And I have promised that I'm going to read all of those. I just need to get around to it. Well, you know, at least this way you have something to motivate you to start them. Well, that's true. Because I think you'll be like me, and once you start them, I won't be able you're to going stop. to yeah. <laughs> It's it's just uh see and when I started reading hers, I started when she published the first one. And we're up to six now, and I've had to wait on each one of them to come out so that I could read them. Well, and see this is this is another another good reason why we read the books that we read. That would be book clubs or you know, online groups where we That's true. have books because there's a lot of books that we've read through the tavern that I would not have picked up otherwise and not because I yeah. wouldn't have enjoyed it but just because I didn't know about it in right. fact the first book of Mercedes Lackey's 500 Kingdom series I would never have picked up that one that was the fairy See, godmother I would yeah, never I, I would it. never picked up that one if I hadn't had it as a book club book and there's See, several other it. ones that are the same way and I just hadn't gotten around to reading it and it was so good <laughs> It was really good. I really enjoyed that one. And it was, it made me want to read the rest of the series at some point. But there's well, several books that I've gotten through the Tavern Book Club that I've enjoyed. And also the, the other group, again, I've mentioned it before, but the the website markreads.net. So many books. I mean, I'm enjoying the heck out of the Newsflush series. Uh, there's been several other books through there that I've read with them and that's been fun because you get even if it's a book that you've read before you get to see it through the eyes of someone who's reading it for the first time Mm -hmm. which is always fun and he's a very emotional person so he will freak out (laughs) when anything shocking or exciting happens and it's so much fun to watch yeah or at least read but i know there's um I can remember the old tavern back when we were still on our, had our old software, and I think it was like, it may have been when the original Tavern Keeper was still around, I can't remember. Back when we did the book club then, we did Italian Revenant by Michael A. Stackpole. I remember that. That was a long time ago. (laughs) It was a really long time ago. But I had... I mean, I had never heard of the book. I had never heard of Michael Stackpole. Mm -hmm. And I read it, and I loved it, which is weird, because the way it's written is something that, it's a style that, it's a, it bounces back and forth in time. And that's one of those things that if it's not done right, it's really annoying. Yes. 
But that one was done so well, and I love that book so much. And another one that I remember doing was uh, Across the Nightingale Floor by, and I may not be pronouncing this right, Lynn Hearn. I haven't read that one. That, I ended up buying the entire trilogy. I don't think I ever actually read the other two. But it wasn't your typical fantasy book either, mostly because it was set in Japan, I believe. Mm Mm-hmm which was really different, but it was really good too. And it's something that I probably would not have picked up and read had it not been for the book club. Right. And more recently was uh, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I have another good reads group that we did a group read and that's the book they chose. And the reason they chose it, the group is those of us who are members of the Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab forum. In Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, they make perfume oils. They make awesome perfume oils. I love them. And we had a thread on the forum about Goodreads, and a lot of us started adding each other as a friend on Goodreads. And then finally, somebody's like, let's just make a group. And the name of our group is Blue Stocking Alchemy. And we decided to do a read-along. And the reason that book was chosen is because in the acknowledgments at the end of the book, Erin Morgenstern mentions Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Oh, really? She's a fan of their products, and she uses them. And it's so funny because the limited edition collection that they had going when I first found Black Phoenix was Carnival Noir. And a couple that I ordered, uh, one of them was Midway, which was, you know, it had it smelled like the Midway of a fair, like the food and everything. Uh-huh. And the other one I ordered was Shill, which was buttered popcorn. That's interesting. And Yeah, and I noticed when I was reading The Night Circus, like, the scenes where they're actually in the circus, there's so much, the way she's describing it, that made me think of the scents that were in the Carnival Noir collection. Oh, how funny. It was really cool for somebody who was a fan of the lab and who knew about, you know, the Carnival Noir perfumes. It was really cool, and she's a wonderful, wonderful author. Yeah, that one's on my my list of books to read. I've I've been meaning to read it for a while now, and I just haven't gotten around to it. It's one of those that it doesn't really go anywhere, but it doesn't matter because that's not the point. Uh Uh-huh. It's one of those that it's more about the journey to get there. Right. And it's it was... I totally would never... I mean, I would not have read this had it not been for that book club... But I'm so glad I did. And it, like I said, it's just very surreal, kind of. It's it's very dreamlike. It, it, it amazed me the way that the woman could write a book and make it feel like that. Uh-huh. It just, she was, it was great. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading it. That's been put on my list of books that I would like to get for Christmas. So <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers to see maybe I will get it. So... My my family is usually pretty good. I, I will get lots of gift cards, but I also usually put out a list just because they know that I want books, but they also know better than to try and buy them for me <laughs> without, no without consulting the list. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, book clubs or, you know, reading groups have, I have found so many wonderful books that way. Uh, one of my favorite books is Tigana by Guy Gabriel Kay. And he actually became one of my favorite fantasy authors after we read that book in the Tavern. Uh, the Tavern Book Club is where I first found the Iron Face series by Julie Kagawa. I wouldn't have read that otherwise. I wouldn't have known about it. Yeah. See, that was, I, I suggested that one. And that was one of those that I stumbled across in Walmart. That one, the covers got me. They do have really pretty covers. They do. And and the colors go so well together. And they're sitting on the shelves. And I'm like, oh, they're pretty. <laughs> and I bought all three of them. <laughs> and then they sat on my shelves for a long time. Till I, I was like, I suggested a bunch for the book club. And I was like, okay, these are things that are sitting on my shelves that I have not read that I need an excuse to read. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, if I'm doing it for book club, that's like, okay, I have to read it because I'm going to talk about it with these people. But, yeah, that was one of the ones I love the covers and the titles, too. But mostly the covers when I saw those in Walmart. I'm like, they're so pretty. I want them. <laughs> they would. They need to be sitting on my shelf. And um, 
oh, one that did we do that? I think we did do it. Did we do um, Name of the Wind? Yes, we did. See, that was one that uh, Peregrine and Marita both had been recommending me for a while, and I had seen it, and it just the cover is one of those that the cover kind of pushed me away because I'm like, that doesn't really, I don't know about all this business, you know? Yeah. And then I got it. I went ahead and ordered. I I was a member of the science fiction book club at the time and they had a big sale going on. Or maybe that was after they had kicked me out and then begged me to rejoin. I don't know. They've done that to me like three times. Not that I'm complaining because every time they want me to rejoin, I get the whole five books for a dollar thing again. So, Oh, hey. But anyway, something I had, and I went ahead and got book one and book two. Mm-hmm. And we were going to read it for book club. So I started reading it and I loved it. It was so good. And I read the second one and loved it too. And if he doesn't hurry up and write book three, I'm going to threaten him with bodily harm. <laughs> Yeah, I know that that was another one for me that I had a hard time getting into it. I enjoyed it, but I didn't, I wasn't in the mood to read that kind of book, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so I'll have to give that another another go around at some point. Yeah, that, that, that happens to me a lot. My mood affects what I want to read. Right. Like, sometimes I'm just not in the proper headspace to read epic fantasy. Right. I want something a little lighter you know and then sometimes I want fluff and then sometimes I want people being chased through magic mirrors by a fae that's been turned into a human who's eating unseelie flesh in order to be immortal yeah sometimes you want that (laughs) yeah I mean it just my mood effect and I haven't really been in an epic fantasy mood in a long time and that's why I'm hoping I know I, I suggested Rhapsody for the book club. Yes, you did. And that's a very large book. I'm talking like it's like at least 600 pages. So it's definitely epic fantasy. And I'm hoping that'll get me back into that mindset because I have so much stuff that I have gotten at McKay's that is epic fantasy that I haven't read because I can't get my head there. That's happened to me before. And, and, and it's really irritating because... You sit there and you read it and I think, I know I should be enjoying this more than I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like, I, when I was on Bookmooch, Bookmooch is a wonderful website, by the way, and if I had a job, I would totally still be participating. You can list books you don't want and people request them. You send them the book and you earn a point. Then you can use that point to request a book from somebody else. It's a good way to get rid of books you don't want and get books you do want. And the only thing you have to spend is the postage to mail the book. And that's, look, mailing a book is cheap. Right. A whole lot cheaper than buying a book. (laughs) Definitely. Especially if you send it media mail, you can mail a paperback book for like a dollar and a half. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's wonderful, wonderful. And I would totally still be doing it if I had a job. But I know from one person I mooched. Almost the entire The Very series by Catherine Kerr. And that's one of those that I've always wanted to read, but it's epic fantasy and I haven't been able to get into it. I've tried to read the first one several times. It's just like, I'm not, this is not what I want to read. (laughs) Well, sometimes it's like that. And sometimes you just need to, you know, push through it. And sometimes you just need to wait until the mood strikes you. And I have a feeling next year, my, my list of books I've read is going to be covered with rereads because I've read so much new stuff this year Uh huh. I know I'm going to reread Mortal Instruments next year I will probably reread the Bulgariad next year I'm probably going I'm, I'm going to reread Rhapsody I'm going to actually I think a couple of the ones I suggested on book club were rereads I know I suggested the first Chicago Land Vampires and when I read the first one I'm going to end up reading them all again of course so I'm going to have a lot of rereads on my list next year yeah, it's almost time to start thinking about what our book challenges are going to be. It's about that time. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to shoot for. It's going to depend. If I can find a job, I'm not going to be quite as ambitious. I really need a job. Because I'll have to be working and I won't have as much time to read. Right. I'll probably start with 60 
And if I hit 60 and still have three months left like I did this year, I'll up it to 75 again. Right. Well, I don't know. I, there's there's a couple of book lists that I want to try and make some progress on, so I might have some specific goals in that direction. But I'm probably going to stick to the same kind of goal that I had this year, or at least about the same volume, just because I never know what's happening in my life. <laughs> I'm uh, you. I don't know how you have time to sleep. I don't sleep. <laughs> I've, I've given up on sleep. <laughs> but oh well. That's what reading is for. Reading is to take up all of those extra hours that you don't know what to do with. And, you know, some people use those hours to sleep. I use them to read. Well, you know, I've been guilty of that. <laughs> oh, I thought of another one that the title got me. Okay. A Discovery of Witches by oh, Deborah Hart. You've mentioned that one before. Yes. Love, 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 loved it. That's one of those that I'm just going to read a few chapters before I go to sleep. And it was the next thing I knew it was seven o'clock in the morning and I had finished the book. Yeah. Yeah. That makes for, um, that makes for an interesting uh, next day. <laughs> oh, I was a zombie. <laughs> but yeah, that one I saw. Actually, the co that one was a combination because the cover is really pretty and the title was really catchy. And I was like, I need to read that. I can just tell by looking at it. I need to read that. <laughs> and the cover for the second book in the series is really pretty, too. But, yeah, D A Discovery of Witches. I was like, I, that sounds fascinating, and the cover's really pretty. Let's read the blurb. Okay, yeah, I've got to read this. <laughs> and it took a while before I ever actually got around to reading it, but I finally got it and read it. And then my best friend took it because she was going to read it. And she's had it for like a year and a half and hasn't read it. And I need to get it back. Well, there's there's only really one other way to find out about books. And I believe Savannah over at the Tavern mentioned this one. And that's recommendations. And I actually, I don't get as many book recommendations as you would think. Mostly because I'm the one that's reading all the books and giving other people recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> More than they usually want. But I do have to say that if it wasn't for my mother recommending these books, I may never have read the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. She was the one who read them, and she actually got them from a friend of hers that she works with who recommended them to her and had the whole series and offered to let her borrow them. And my mom immediately read them, loved them, and brought them to me and said, you need to read this. It's exactly your kind of book. It's dark. It's twisted. You'd love it. <laughs> and this makes me wonder what my mom really thinks of me. <laughs> but she was right. It was dark and twisted, and I did love it. But... You know, it was it was funny because I usually read so much that she doesn't always get a a jump on me. You know, she would. Yeah. I'm always telling her about all these books that I'm reading, and so all of a sudden she was she was so excited that she had one that she could recommend to me. She was like, "You've got to read this. It's it's totally you, and you will love it." And of course, I've been a fan of Cassandra Clare ever since. And I can't say I've read all of her books yet because I keep getting interrupted by other books to read either for the tavern or for the podcast but i am eventually going to finish reading the well the current last one in the mortal instrument series until the next one comes out in 2014 yes and then i need to go back and restart reading the infernal devices because i read the first one but i haven't gone any further than that and i think the new one in that series comes out next year yeah, the, it, it'll be the last one. She's only going to do three of those. Okay. The third one of those comes out in 2013. The final Mortal Instrument comes out in 2014. And then a whole new Shadowhunter series starts in 2015. She's a busy girl. Yeah. <laughs> but see, and I had seen those. I think Holly actually bought them before you read them. So I knew about them. And I was planning on reading them. <clears throat> Those are others that have really, really good covers, by the way. Yes, they really I do. I say that. They're all shiny and metallic looking, yes. and I love them. And we you like read shiny them. things. Yes. You read them, and you were like, oh my god, you, you have to read them. You have to read them now. Well, Jess, they're dark and twisted. You'd love them. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I did. <laughs> and I think what finally made me read it, I think we did the first one in the book club. 
Yes, we did. I just we did City it, of Bones. I suggested it. I think that's what finally made me read it. Now I own them all. That was my plan. <laughs> Your evil plan. Hey, it worked, didn't it? Yeah, it did. <laughs> Which, you know, that one was one of those where we were pretty well divided on the tavern. Because normally, if we read something like that, we either all love it or we all don't like it. Yeah, but that one was that one... pretty split down the middle. Yeah, because Marita wasn't a huge fan. No, she... she didn't like it at all. Well, I mean, she liked it, but she didn't love it like we do. I think she ended up reading the first... I think she ended up reading book two and book three just to find out what happened. Oh, okay. I didn't know she went on there. Yeah, I think she... I don't think she read four and five, which she really needs to, because the way three ends, wow. Yeah, well, because I, I thought when she read it that it was... She was kind of irritated by some things in book one. Yeah. So I was, I was actually... Was, I was surprised that she moved on from that. She said that it was mostly a sense of, okay, it was just intriguing enough that she had to know where it went. Mm. Yeah, well, but yeah, we were, like that. we were pretty well split on that one because I mean, you and I both loved it. Oh, yeah. I was, I've been in love with Jace Wayland and since since day one, and I was like, okay, he is reason enough for me to continue reading. <laughs> so that one was one we were pretty well split on. But yeah, that, there's a lot of ways that I come up with what I'm going to read, and well, the Karen Marie Moaning books that I'm reading, that was titles and covers. I saw them; they had a display. They're not the covers that are out now. They had a display in Barnes & Noble last time I ran there, and they have reprinted them with all new covers. And I don't like those covers as well as the original covers. Uh -huh. The original covers were really interesting to look at. Like, the cover for Shadow Fever, which is book five, was this... It looked like this old, red, leather-bound book. Which, there's reason for that. Because, you know... During this whole entire series, she's chasing an evil book. But the original covers were so interesting and so pretty. And then all of the titles had the word fever in them. It was like blood fever, dark fever, fey fever, dream fever, and shadow fever. Uh-huh. So that one was a combination of covers and titles that drew me in. And I saw them, and it took me a long time to get my hands on them so I could actually read them. I didn't even know what they were about. And I was like, I want to read these. Right. Well, so, that's, that, that's a good cover artist's you know, job is to try and draw you in. And even if you don't know anything about the book, if you see something that looks interesting, they're hoping that that'll be enough to make you pick it up off the shelves. Sometimes it works. Sometimes, Sometimes it, it does. Because, <laughs> I mean, okay, I love Mercedes Lackey's books, and but her Collegium Chronicles, the last few she's written, the covers are kind of boring. Although, when you're a bestseller like Mercedes Lackey, you kind of have your reputation to fall back on, but still. <laughs> That's true. Come on. You can do better. I mean, seriously, if I were looking at these books, I wouldn't, based on their covers, I wouldn't pick them up. I'm like, hey, what, did you just stop trying because, oh, it's Mercedes Lackey, people are going to buy it? Well, unfortunately, I think that happens sometimes. I was like, That's just, um, mm -mm. I don't like these covers. We need new covers. <laughs> So that is some of the reasons that we've been drawn to the books that we like, and a couple that we didn't like, but that's just the nature of the beast, I guess, when you're a bibliophile. Yeah. So if there's any different ways that you found books, or if there's any book covers that you liked, or any books that you got as a recommendation, let us know. We'd like to get some feedback from you on this topic, and there's several ways for you to contact us. One is through email, of course, and our email is bibliophiles.podcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, and we are at bibanonpodcast. And you can let us know either way how you like our show or if you have anything to contribute. Mm -hmm. and if you, or if you have any book recommendations, we'll always take those. Absolutely. We like getting recommendations. After all, it's one way that we find out about books. Yep. And you can also join in. We have a couple of other places you can find us on the internet. We are, of course, at the Malorian Tavern. And that website is www.maltavern.com. And there is a special thread specifically for the podcast. And you can comment there. Or you can comment anywhere at 
there's another topic that you see that you would like to join in on or start a new one. We always love to see new people over there. Yeah, real ones, not the spam bots we've been getting lately. We have been getting a lot of spam bots. What's been up with that, I wonder? I don't know, but I'm either going to, I think I'm going to have to go through and clear out some of the spam users. Yeah, oh well. Part of well, our, you know, I've decided it's spring cleaning at the tavern anyway, so. You no, know, it's part of running a website. What can you do? <laughs> but we are also on Goodreads, and we also do have a YouTube channel. If uh, subscribing through YouTube is easier than subscribing through iTunes or Podbean, you can listen to us that way as well. So just a little bit of announcements. We will next week be discussing uh, Crimson Frost by Jennifer Estep. And that is the fourth book in the Mythos Academy series. We were lucky enough to get an ARC for it. So it's coming out sometime in the middle of this month. and December 24th. It comes out Christmas Eve. Oh, perfect. Okay. So we will actually be discussing it and a little bit about the whole series next week. So join us then, and then just to keep you guys up to date, the week after that we will be discussing the next Tavern Book Club book, which is Night Train to Rigel by Timothy Zahn. Yep. So that's what we'll be reading, and hopefully uh, you guys can read along with us and join in on the discussion. We look forward to it. Absolutely. So until next week, we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.